So in this video we are going to finish off the feature for taking some items and putting them on the action bar and then being able to see the stack size and use them from the action bar, right? So right now we can take the items and put them there, but we can't see how many stacks we have of the specific item. So the first thing I would like to do is to set up the actual UI system or the UI um, elements that we need to be able to actually manipulate it from the scripts. So what we have to do is to select our action bars right here under the canvas and we have to add some text to them. So basically we can take, for example, the icon here, uh, the first one, right click on it, say UI and then select a text. And we need to set up this text so that it actually fits inside um, what's called inside the button so that we can see it whenever we have something on it. So yeah, let's see. We can select the text here and then we can set a scale. Should be one, that's fine. Um, the width and height, I would like to be 70 times 70. So these numbers just fit for my size here. Uh, you can set them to whatever uh, makes your um, that your UI look best, but this is the values for my text or uh, for my buttons. And uh, then I would like to change the text here to, for example, one, just so we can see the size. Let's just say two, because we're not going to write the size when there's only one. And then I would like to change the font to whatever I'm using. I would like to change the size to 40. And alignment is left and bottom. And then the color just white. There we go. This is how it's going to look when there's some stacks on there. So we can read that there's a two stack here. So we can take this text and duplicate it and move it to the next one and duplicate that one as well and move it to the next one. So they're childs of the icons and just take it and move it over so that you basically center it on the other. Oops, like just center it on the parent. If you move whatever is under, under something, when you get to the parent, it will show you like this cross here. So when, when you are centered, it will show the, the cross. We can do the same here. See here, now it's centered, so there's this blue cross that lights up right there. Okay. So now I can delete the numbers again because I don't need the numbers from, uh, from the start. But now we have the text. Okay, and other thing we need to do is to make sure the action button has a reference to the text. So we can open up our script and inside the script we'll have to create a new uh, what's called field so that we can check the stack size so let's just put it somewhere here private text and let's call it stack size and we can just set it as serialized field save this jump back in here and make sure that each button has a reference to its own um, its own text so if you want to update did I even write in the right script? Action button, there we go. There we go. So select them and drag the text onto there. And there we go. So now there's a reference to the text on all the action buttons here. And I'm just going to delete the numbers. There we go. Okay, so now we have done everything we need to do in the UI part. Now we can go to the scripting and add the functionality for showing this. So the first thing we have to do in the script is actually to take the usables here and instantiate it right away so that we don't get any problems later when we try to put something in it. Because at some point we might want to put something in this stack and just to make sure that it exists when we want to put something in it, we're just going to instantiate it up here so we don't have to check if it's null all the time every time we try to use it. So just make sure that you have written the whole line out with usables like this. When you've done that, we can try to go to the set usables function. Let's see if we can find it right there. So set usables right now simply just sets the usable on it and updates the visual. Okay. So update visual changes the icon, but update visual also needs to set up the actual, um, what's called the, the, the stack count on the text. So update visual right down here needs to do something extra. We need to say if the count is larger than one. So if our count is larger than one, then we would like to display a number. There's no reason for us to display the number one because that's just one. So we don't need to see how many there is. So if the count is larger than one, like two and above, well, then we would like to show it. So we just say UI manager that my instance that updates stack size this. 
So you'll see it's going to complain here and tell you, hey, um, this is not possible because the action button cannot be converted from an action button to I clickable. That's because the action button isn't I clickable right now. So we need to make sure that it's I clickable so that the count from the action button can be taken over from or moved over from the update stack size uh, or from this script to the update stack size when we put it in here. So clickable, right click on it, implement interface. Let's see, it makes a stack count right there. And it also makes a count. So basically this count here needs to return count like so. And this one down here needs to be a public text. My stack text. If I could hit the buttons correct. And uh, then we need to say get and return uh, my stack text. My stack text. Okay. Stack size, that's what it's called. There we go. Okay, so the reason that we needed to implement these two is because that our update stack size function needs a stack size text and a count to be able to function. And when we passed it on to the update stack size here, it wants to have a I clickable so that we can use these two things from the interface. Remember, if we look at I clickable right there, it has um, an icon, a count, and a stack. And these are the tools that we need for updating the actual visual. Yes, okay, so let's get back to it. Let's go down here to our update visual. We are passing it on here. So basically, if I save this, this should already show us how many we have so let's try to run the game some potions i have five i put them up here it shows five but there is a problem right now so if i take some energy or some health and i use these well yeah i would use them in the inventory but this number never changes and if i would pick up more potions this one never updates so we need to do something so that the number actually updates whenever a change happens inside the inventory. So whenever we gain some more potions, it should update. And whenever we use the potions, it should also update. Okay, so let's try to write some code for that. Okay, so to make this work, we need to look at something called delegates an event. I can't remember if we have used it before in this tutorial, uh, but I have used it in my other tutorials. So basically we just need to create an event that triggers every time we add a new um, item to the inventory, and then that one needs to trigger a function. So let's just try to make a function here called update item count. And this is inside the action button script. Okay, so this function here needs to take in an item. And this item is the, is the item we just picked up. So whenever I pick up an item in the inventory, this function here will be executed on all the action buttons. And then we can check if, we basically need to check if uh, item is the same item as we have on this button. Okay, so basically when we pick something up, this function is executed on all action buttons. We check, well, the item we just picked up, is it the same item that we have on this action button? If it is, then we need to update the stack size. So let's just do a debug.log here. Um, function triggered. So let's just write this debug.log just to see if it works. We save this. Right now we're not calling it anywhere, but we need to do something in our inventory to make this work. So if we jump to the inventory script, I would like you to go all the way to the top here because we need to create a delegate. So let's make a public delegate call that returns void and it needs to be called item count changed. And then we're going to call it item, item. There we go. Okay. So what is this? Well, the delegate is going to be used to be creating our event. And the delegate needs to have the same structure as the function that it needs to be connected to. Okay, so if we compare this delegate to our action button function here, you can see this is public void. It has a name update item count that doesn't really matter. But the important thing here is that it takes in a parameter or an argument called item. And as you can see right here, this one also takes in an argument called item and it returns void. So because of this, 
we have the same structure or the same definition as the actual um, function down there. Okay. When the delegate is created, we can create an event. So we can make a public event called item count changed based on the delegate's name. And we can just make this event called anything. Let's call it item count changed event. That makes sense, right? So this event is going to be raised every time we pick up an item. And then the function out here in our action button can listen to that event. And when it listens to that event and see it's popped up, well, then we're going to call some functionality we are going to add later. Um, yeah. So what else? Well, we need to use this somewhere. And we can create a function that actually uses this. So let's go all the way to the bottom of the script and make a new function called void on item count changed. So what is this? Well, the reason that we are creating a function for this instead of just calling it directly, uh, the event directly, is because it's a very good um, code practice to do this so that we don't get null references. Because if you call an event that no one is listening to, you get a null reference exception and your game might crash. So just to make sure that someone is listening to the event before we call it, we actually always make a function call on something changed, right? So if the event is called item count changed event, well, then we're going to create a function called on item count changed. Okay. And then we're going to call the item. So notice that it has the same structure. So it has the same, it also has a parameter called item here. So this is the important part. We are going to make an if statement called item count changed event isn't null. So if our item count changed event isn't null, well, then someone is listening to it. So if we didn't have this fun, this, um, what's it called, this uh, if statement, and we just get like this, item count changed event dot invoke, and gave it the item, well, then we might have a, a null reference exception if we didn't do the if statement around it, if no one was listening to it. Okay, so we save. I can actually try to show you why we're doing all this. So if we take the line of code here, item count changed event and evoke it, and we press control C, and we go all the way up here to our place in stack, for example, here. Well, before we return true, we can call this event. So now the event is triggered, and every function that listens to this event right now will be triggered as well and this item here will be passed on so let's say if our function in our action button here was listening to the event it will be triggered whenever the event is executed and this item right here will be the same as the item right there that is passed on placed in the stack so if I save this right now you'll see that we will get a null reference exception if we try to add more items There we go. Here's the null reference exception, right? So this is because no one is listening to the event and we just triggered the event. So how do you fix that? Well, just to make sure that we don't have that null reference exception, we take the line of code right here from the place in stack, cut it out, and we go all the way down here and just paste that. We still have it there. So instead of just calling the event right there on the point, we actually call this function that checks if it's null before we call it. So we go up here to place in stack, call on item changed instead, and give it the item. And again, we copy paste this one on item changed. And I think we would also need to put it in here in place empty, right here before we return true. So if we save now and jump back to the script, you'll see that even though you add potions, Nothing happens down here, like if we do like this, nothing happens yet, but you don't get the null reference exception anymore. The error's not there, and uh, null reference exceptions are in general very bad, but we just prevented it right now, so we don't have that. Okay, so now we have an, uh, our event, and it triggers whenever we put place something in the inventory by calling this function that triggers the event down here. So now we need to make sure that all our action buttons are listening to that event so that we can actually call the function called on update uh, thing. Let's see here. Uh, there it is. Update item count, that's what it's called. So we need to call this. How do you do that? Well, it's actually fairly simple. We can go all the way to, where should we do it? In start, I guess. 
So basically, it's almost the same as when we're adding a listener, listener on click. This is an event. And as you can see, it's written Unity event. And then we are adding the on click to the on listener. So if you remember, we did that earlier. It's basically almost the same. So we say inventory script dot my instant not item count changed event. This is the event. Well, we need to assign a function to this event. So how do you do that? We use plus and equal right there. And we want to assign an item count changed event uh, delegate. And what function is it? Well, it asks for a function that returns void and that returns an, uh, that has an item as parameter. Well, lucky for us, we have created that function down here. So we can actually just go up there and write update item count. Oh, where did it go there? Like so. So now we have actually assigned our update item count function to be triggered every time the on item uh, the item count event is executed. So this means whenever I if I go in here, let's find the right unity, and if I would play and I add some functions, you see function triggered right there every time I click one of these potions. So now the function is triggered on these action buttons. So now we need to do something extra. We need to make sure that we update the stack size every time it happens. And how do you do that? Well, if our item is iUsable, that's the first thing. We need to make sure that the item we just added to the inventory is iUsable because if it isn't iUsable, there's no chance that our action bar has it on it, right? Because it, it can only contain iUsables. So if we pick up a, an armor item that can't be stacked, well, then we don't need to check if we need to update the stack size. Okay. And then we need to check if our usables here on the button, if the count is larger than zero. If the count isn't less than zero, then there's no reason to check something. Okay. Then we say if our usables peak that type is equal to item that get type. Remember, this, this function here is only going to be called when we need to update the button. This means I have a stack of potions. If I add a potion to the inventory, this function is called. That's why I need to check, well, do I have a count that is larger than zero? If it isn't larger than zero, well, then there's not really anything I need to do. And But if I have a count that is larger than zero, well, then I have an item on me, which means that there's a chance that I have a usable item and I the count is large and zero. Well, there's a chance that this item I'm using right here, or that I have on me right now, is the same type as the item that just was added. So I'm checking if the item that is on the action button is the same type as whatever I just picked up. If that's the case, well, then I need to update my count. So I need to take all my usables, and I need to take everything from the inventory again. So I actually take all the items from the inventory again and put them onto my usable stack right here by reinstantiating it like this. So let's say we pick up two potions. Well, then I have two extra potions plus whatever I had on me put back on the usables. And I need to set up my count again just to make sure the count is correct. Okay. So all this is, is fine and it, it works for actually using the items, but we need to update our stack size. So I need to make sure that I take this line of code here and put it down here as well. So let's try to save the script and let's see what happens when we play the game in Unity. So if I would add, take this and add it over here, it will show that I have a stack of two. And if I get more potions, it will actually update right now. So it shows the actual number of potions here. It's like eight here and I have eight in my inventory. However, there is one thing we are not doing. If I would use my health and I use the potion, they will disappear from my inventory over here. But this one still shows that I have eight potions. So why is that? Well, the reason that it does that is because if we look at our um, items, let's see if we can find one health potion here. Health potion is calling a function called remove. So if we go to remove, remove here, is calling a function called remove item from slot 
So we go there. This function, this code here removes the item when we use it. But we're never doing anything to update the stack size. So right there, we can actually go and update the stack size so that we we can see um, see the number go down in our um, our game. And we do that by saying inventory script dot my instance on item count changed. And we simply just take my items that pop and put in here, like so. So the item we put up pop out, we simply feed to on uh, count changed when we remove something. So besides that, we will also have to go to clear. Let's see if we can find it there. Because let's say we're done with all the items, we don't have any more items left, then we need to clear the slot as well. So we can just take this function right here, or this line of code we wrote up here, and go down and paste it right there. And then leave the clear right down there, because we need to clear it after, just to make sure it works. So now we have also popped it and cleared it. So let's try to save this. And let's try to run the game. And let's see what happens when we start using the items. Add some potions. Have six potions here, and I reduce my health. It should be very low, and then I start pressing the button. Five, four, three, two, and then I have one left. And you'll see when I press one more time, I pressed one. It used the item over here, but it still shows that I have an item left on my my action bar, and. When I start adding the items again, this one is not showing the items anymore. So we need to make sure that this one disappears as well when we're done uh, using the items. So I can take this one and pop over here and now I have seven. And I can start using them right there. But it shows one, I use it, and then it still stays here. So we need to do something to update the action bar. The reason that our action bar isn't updated is because we have something in on click that doesn't work as we want it to. As you can see here, we say usables.pop.use, but if we go into the use function on the uh, health potion, you'll see that it removes itself from the inventory. However, we are also removing it um, by saying pop as well. So what we have to do is actually to change the pop here to a peak instead. So we check something and then we use it and let it remove itself from the inventory um, because this was the problem that we were removing something and when we did that, the count down here would be zero. So we would never go in here and update the stack size. So this line of code would, ne would never be executed for the last, um, last item. So if we save it now and jump back in here, we should be able to actually add some items and reduce our health put it on the action bar, we can use the items right there, as you can see, so they are all gone. And we can add new items and put them on the action bar as well. Reduce, we can use some of them and we can add more just to increase the count, as you can see. So now it should work correctly with, um, with the count. So that's what I want to do in this video. As you can see, it might be a little hard to read the numbers here. We can always select um, the text here and then add component and write an outline like so. So there's a black outline on them. And then I would like to just put the alpha totally up. So we can try again. Maybe it's easier to read now. Add the potions right there. So now that you can see there's a black outline around it. So it makes it easier. You can always adjust the size of it as well. So that's what I want to do in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.